If you're watching this video, you probably watched this video. And yes, there were skids, but then there were tears. Uh, I've got some nice kick going on. Something's come loose. And now we're here with the tubes on the hoist and the motor is like on a stand. Uh, so pretty much what happened was uh, all the oil went into the head and didn't go back into the sump because like someone thought second gear donuts was a, like a pretty ridiculously cool idea. Uh, so consequently now we have like a few bearing shells that are mostly in the sump but some of it was left in there. Um, this is, these are the shells for number five. An interesting thing that we found, if you come and have a look at this, is the amount of crap in the sump. There's like sand, literal sand in the sump. So that's not great to start off with, but then we've got the bearing shells, which if you've never seen bearing shells before, they shouldn't look like that. Um, yeah, that's what we call fucked. Um, so, we're on the hunt for another engine. It's going to be a lot easier because this crank shaft has ended up to be damaged. But, I've got a few leads at the moment. Uh, all I can do is strip this one down and get the stuff ready to put onto the next motor. And uh, then we'll give it a go. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how that turns out. So the best solution was to buy this. And now we have this. So the failure mode on this was that uh, the motor pumped all its oil into the top of the head and sort of retained it and oil came out of here. Now there are these tubes here and I don't know what Toyota was thinking but Basically these are oil drain tubes, they're like the lowest part of the head at the back on the on the rear bank so the motor naturally kind of sits like this. So it's like really like the lowest point. Uh, so what we're going to do is just delete these tubes and it'll mean that the oil won't necessarily bank up here, it'll flow all the way down uh, into this here and well you know, it'll return to the sump a lot easier. Um, just seems pretty logical, you know? Uh, so we're gonna do that, and hopefully that'll improve things. I'm still sort of pretty keen to, uh, in the side of the cover here, I'll still put a put a drain in here, uh, and uh, probably weld to the sump uh, before we put, like, this new motor in. Okay, it's uh, four days to scrutineering now, <laughs> and uh, just uh, swapping the the backing plate with my the studs for my CAS over onto this new motor. Just gave it a wash down, man, it comes up clean. Okay, so the Camry's it's, uh, forever covered in oil and shit. Uh, inside the motor looks super clean. Um, I did uh, wash this out a little bit. Uh, I just used fuel. Uh, but this is the um, the forward bank. So the rearward bank, you can see how much heat the rear bank gets uh, in comparison to the front bank and how badly they stain. Now, this is just a bit of a design thing with the 1MZ uh, because usually the motor literally sits like this, so the, the other bank is sort of down here, so they sit a bit lower. Also, what it makes me curious about the, uh, the oil flow characteristics of it. Now, I'll try to get in there and uh, show you what our solution for these tubes is. Uh, I just literally have 
punched a hole in the tube because getting him out was going to be too hard. Um, yeah, it's definitely going to work. Um, I poured oil into the head and it came straight out. So that's exactly what we want. So the oil that came out of this wild gunky, a bit of a case of the Camrys again, um, was actually really, really good, uh, really smooth. There were no, no bits in the sump. There was a couple of little tiny bits of silicon, but you know, that's to be expected. Um, I don't think this motor's ever been rebuilt. It's a uh, it's pretty, pretty nice motor. Just, I don't know, ran really good so yep I'm definitely still keen to run it uh, I've still got to swap the injector rail over at least uh, I really want to run uh, the injectors we had before because they'd been uh, cleaned and um, not modified but they'd been uh, serviced and stuff like that so I'm gonna go ahead and start putting this backing plate on and then uh, maybe get the covers on and um, Hopefully have it onto the gearbox tonight, uh, time depending, because, uh, you know, I have a job, just like most people. Well, the meaning of life is easy. You just, oh, hang on. What the hell? What, what are you doing? Hang on. What are you doing? Go on. Get in there. Mm -hmm. Ah, much better. So as you guys might have guessed, the tyres are sorted and we have stickers, which means that we actually pass scrutineering and we are good to go. Um, right, the next thing is I've become like absolutely paranoid that we are going to run out of oil and we're going to kill this motor. So I'm going to make a sump and this is the first time I've ever made a sump but I have done lots and lots and lots of rocks of reading and I've got a pretty good idea of what I want to do. We are pretty high off the ground. We're 105 mil from the sump to the ground and that is exactly by design. Uh, so the sump is actually also higher than the exhaust. Uh, the exhaust is uh, 85 mil off the ground. So what I'm gonna do is extend the sump down so the capacity will decrease by depth. Uh, capacity will increase by depth, sorry. <laughs> so the height will decrease and the capacity will increase. And then we can get 1.14 uh, liters more oil into this motor. And then if we overfill at half a liter, we get, well, 1.6, 1.7 liters more oil into this motor and we should be very, very safe, especially with the changes that we've made in the rear bank there uh, from the last segment. So I'm gonna give that a crack. Uh, so this sump, uh, this motor usually sits on a tilt in the car. As you can see from here and the previous video, the pan is, pretty shallow and on this pan the oil level is actually uh, pre-focus the oil level is actually just here so it only retains about uh, 1.9 to 2.1 liters of oil in the actual sump uh, when the engine is running so even though that might sound a fair bit it's not super ideal when you're doing high rpm sustained um, driving or loading, um, particularly with the sort of stuff that we sort of, you know, plan to do with, with that thing there. Uh, so as you'll see from the uh, sort of circular uh, video, probably, <laughs> um, 
what happened was it, it threw all the oil into the into the back uh, bank and it sort of just hung on there um, so if it had more capacity uh, to pick up it could essentially like be able to have a lot more reserve to, to pump a bit a bit more and hopefully with the changes that I've made to the drainage situation it will actually return to the sump a bit more so I'm just gonna uh, increase the capacity of this little tub and the way I'm gonna do that is I'm just gonna cut it uh, along this uh, line here where it's where it's flat and you can even see like the ridge from the from the sunlight hitting it so I'm just gonna cut that like all the way around to where it's where it's all square and just uh, bump it up Okay, now it's all cleaned up. Just gonna find the line and uh, mark it with the ubiquitous green tape. So I've cut these two strips at 45 millimeters, and uh, they're just, I think they're like 1.2 mil steel or something. Just a, just a tip, if you're using uh, galvanized steel, you gotta take the galvanizing off because it's zinc, and even though zinc is conductive, you will get a lot of crap and artifacts in your weld, and your weld could become porous. So especially if you're doing oil stuff, you want to clean it all off and uh, make it nice to, to weld and make it easy for yourself. All right, so now that we've got our basic shape profile marked out, what we're gonna do is put that into here and uh, I'll just mark from here at 30 millimeters, sink it into there, just clamp it on the sides and buzz it around. Another thing I would like to achieve is to get the pickup into the center. So while we're sort of extending it anyway, I may as well cut on this flange and then I can rotate that around and uh, get it like reasonably in the center. And so this is the final position. Well, so bang smack in the middle of the sump. So the reason that I wanted to build the sump this way is that from here I can make all the baffles and put everything and sort of tack it into here without having to work through and under stuff and then when I pull it out flip it over I'll just put a windage tray on the top box it all off so I've made a bunch of these 
like little fillets. And what I'm gonna do, just put them all in, all the way around the stump. That should be pretty good. It's like a, a matrix kind of deal. So this is the same as like the Mazda MX-5 uses and the uh, Corvette uses. Uh, no tricky, trappy flap doors or anything. Uh, just literally just pushes the oil into one area and it banks up and stops it flowing. Well, if nothing, it's definitely an idea that holds water. Because I'm a lover of the double oval, I've reinstated the little reinforcement that they had. So, pickup is now in the center, and it has this little doodle to lean on, as we all do. And uh, now it's all supported, and it's good as OEM. So, here's the janky and product. 1.2 liters more in a prism configuration with baffle plate. I uh, don't give a fuck about rounding the edges because fuck me, it's gonna be in a sump and I really don't give a fuck. Um, the gaps on the end are there for the reason to let oil through. A lot of people will weld it all the way up the top, but honestly, how the F and hell is your oil gonna get from the edges to the bottom? You're working backwards. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna flap this, this and make it look all pretty because people care about Instagram welds. Uh, and then paint it with some filler bits. And then we'll be able to like, bang it on, like, I mean, like that. Have the camera sunk on, like that. And uh, have our 75 mil ground clearance, and we'll be all good. Righto, so, Thanks to pulling the sump off the other motor, here's our comparison. You can see how much more material is on that sump and uh, where our new capacity is. If it will focus you.